when picking out a design for a cell. First thing you're going to start with is your source voltage. Your source voltage will determine how many plates you're going to want run, how it's wired, it's going to determine everything. Your next target is your amperage, the desired amperage you wish to draw. Um, so let's say for, I don't know, a, a, a 12 volt application. It's, it's real fun and easy to run these off of 12 volt car batteries with a with a charger on standby to keep your battery voltage. The connections are safe. You're not dealing with line voltage from your house. Um, so 12 volt applications, generally speaking, are, are very nice. So let, let, let's just go through that. What we found is that four end configurations, um, four neutral, so a a negative or positive doesn't really matter four neutrals and then your next negative or positive um, obviously they have to be opposite polarity is what seems to run quite well. It draws enough amperage to get something done and yet runs efficiently enough that you're not wasting amps and creating heat. This particular cell, if I were to run this on a 12 volt setup, um, you have 36 plates it would be a 4N7. So there would be four neutral cell stacks in here, or, or seven neutral cell stacks in this one cell. Um, experimenting with electrolyte concentrations and things like that will, will give you baseline numbers for how much amperage to accept or to expect with a, a given square inch of surface area. Um, relative numbers, and, and everybody has their own opinion about electrolyte concentrations. I prefer very weak solutions. Uh, they're safe to handle. They spill all over the place. It's not a problem. It's not much different than a, a cleaning solution. It's, it's really no big deal. Um, using that, it's usually about 0.25 to 0.33 amps per square inch. So if I wanted to sit down and figure out the math on this, I could. Uh, I don't have a calculator. I don't have a free hand to do the math right now. But that would tell me how many amps this cell would draw at what voltage. If it was too many amps for my application, I would just simply start removing stacks. In other words, I would take it from a 7 stack system to a 6 or a 5 or a 4. Um, and then that pretty much does your cell design for you. It's real simple. You find your voltage, that determines your neutrals. Your number of neutrals, or, or the number of spaces in between each connection, for round numbers you want between 2 and 2.4 volts in each gap. So if I apply 12 volts and then say I have, it would be easier with a pen, but let, let's see here. Let's drop this, give you guys a little bit of a visual aid. If I had 12 volts to work with, right, I would, one plate, okay, I want to divide 12 by about 2.2, that gives us oh, five and some change. Hold on, let me, let me bust out some math real quick. That way I can speak accurately about it. 12 divided by 2.2. That gives us 5.4. So the next round number would be a 5n. So if it's dead 12 volts, I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 neutrals, and then my next connection plate. Actually, oops. Um, and did, did I do that right? 1 space, 2 space, 3 space, 4 space, 5 space, 6 space. Actually, no, I want a 4n. 5 spaces, I'm sorry. Not 5 neutrals, 5 spaces. So forget about that one. So I would make this plus, and I make that negative, um, or positive negative. 14 volts, obviously you can go up and, and do the math, but you want it between 2.2 and 2.4 volts. 2.4 is slightly overdriving a cell. Over time you will see some iron leaching um, 2.2 is, is right about the sweet spot, but you don't get much production for that. So that, that range will work quite nicely. Um, 
other aspects of this to cover real quick. Uh, there's some conjecture or some some ideas about pumping the cells or natural drafting. Um, I can get into that more in depth on a later one or a later video. Pumping does not change the efficiency of the cell. In other words, if I were to pump fluid through the cell versus just simply letting it naturally flow, um, the efficiency would stay the same. The MMW would stay the same. It's constant. However, your amp draw will increase and therefore your production will increase. So you could have a cell that's running at 5 MMW. Uh, it's drawing 10 amps, natural draft. If you want more production out of that same cell, you can simply add a small pump to it pump the fluid in and it will knock off the small air bubbles off the plates it will increase your amp draw you'll get uh, between 15 and 30 amps instead of the 10 depending on how you pump it um, but your efficiency will still stay at 5 mmw it's slight up and down but but nothing worth noting um, So that, that's that's pretty much it for now. I mean, that's that's the basic features of it. This cell is inherently strong. Um, it's been tested to full flashback. The gaskets hold. Um, the plate system holds. The bolts hold. Um, all in all, it's it's very easily reconfigurable cell. Uh, keeps all your electrical connections outside of the gas space. That's very important. Having electrical connections, if you've watched my video of uh, this can happen, you've seen what happened to 10 of my wet cells simultaneously detonating because of a poor electrical connection. Um, and, and I used stainless steel hardware and, and all kinds of things like that um, on the inside of the cell. It was copper wire, but it really boils down to stainless steel is a very poor conductor. Um, when you use it as an electrical connection inside a cell, it still gets hot. If you look up the resistance um, or the resistivity of stainless, it, it's to, to pass amperage through stainless steel um, directly as a connection with high amperage, like I, what I was doing and, and what a lot of these other parallel cell designs are doing. Um, it, it gets hot. You basically might as well put a heater element inside a hydrogen-oxygen environment and then turn it on. That's about as much sense. Plus it makes reconfiguration difficult. This, you just pop off a couple connectors, move them to a different point, reconnect it, and you're off and running again. You can switch from one source voltage to another source voltage quickly and easily um, without getting your hands wet or ha having to take apart the cell. Or, with minimal amount of fuss. Um, serious design advantage on that. So that's pretty much what I got right now. Um, those two there are experimental 8 inch cells just for those people who will wonder. Uh, it's the same thing that I've shown on other videos. I've just added plates and made two of them. So we're getting ready for some real fun gas production over at D3's place. Um, Scarecrow was playing with the torch today. I was happy to see it. That looked trick. So we got some fun stuff coming up. So I'll talk to everybody later. Bye.